فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم If he does that command with sincerity and in accordance to the sunnah we say يخرج المأمور عن عن العهدة you're no longer demanded and you're no longer requested to come with it and no one will ask you for it the sincerity is not something a person can determine so that's not what we can actually judge you for but what we can do is if you don't pray in accordance to the sunnah if you don't pray in accordance to the sunnah we can say to you ya akhi al-kareem ya akhi brother go and pray again you've not prayed correctly you just prayed a prayer without tahara you have to pray again brother because you left a wajib as for the sincerity and the intention of the person is not something we can control or is not something that we we know now الذي يدخل في الأمر وذاك وما لا يدخل يدخل في خطاب الله تعالى المؤمنون والسالي والصبي والمجنون يرى داخلين في الخطاب الكفار المخاطبون في فروع الشرائع وبما لا يتسحق إلا به وهو الإسلام لقوله تعالى ما سلككم في سقاط قالوا لم نكن من المصابين ودي سي ما سلككم في سقاط قالوا لم نكن من the author rahimahullah here he places and he talks about what enters into the amr and what enters into the nahi and that which doesn't enter into it in simple terms the author just wants to say here when allah commands someone and when Allah commands or Allah prohibits who is Allah tabarak wa ta'ala talking to the author here just wants to speak about and wants you to know ma'rifatul mukhatabina bil amri wal nahi who are the ones who have been spoken to in the command and the prohibition who who is Allah addressing and who is this speech directed to and the speech of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala in accordance to the people I mean the creation is of two types a people who enter into the command and the prohibition the first one is man a group of people that fall under Allah's command and they fall under Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's prohibition and that the awamir in the Quran and the Sunnah is directed at them and the prohibition in the Quran and the Sunnah is directed at them and the second group of people are a people that do not enter into the command and they do not enter into the prohibition. This is not, this is not speaking to them. Who are the first people then in which the command and the prohibition is addressing them, is speaking to them? And it is the ones that the author says here, the author here says that the ones who are going to enter <coughs> into Allah or the addressing and the speech of Allah is directed at is the mu'minun and the author here means by mu'minun he means the believers who have two characteristics aqal which is sanity and bulugh which is reached age of puberty are you with me brothers here he means al mu'minun the ones who have come by, who have gathered two things al aqlu wal bulugh that they are sane and they've also reached age of puberty the majority of the ulama in usul al fiqh what do they call this Puberty and what? 
and sanity, when they're both present in somebody, what is that individual addressed? And what do they call them in usul al-fiqh? They call this person mukallaf. This person is called a mukallaf. If you hear the word mukallaf, it means that you are in an individual who's reached age of puberty and you are sane. The author, on, the author on the other hand, he just says mu'minun. The second type is those who are not being addressed here. And they are the not intended here. And the author mentions who they are. The word sahi. Sahi means a person who forgot. The word sahi here is a nisyan, is to forget something. Dhuhulul qalb an ma'lumin lahu mutakarrirun fihi is when a person leaves off something which he affirms, he accepts, he agrees to, but he leaves it because his mind forgets it, basically, it leaves his mind. It's called Nisyan, right? Then this one is not being spoken to here. Whilst he's in a state of forgetfulness, the Sharia is not talking to him right now. He's speaking to him once it comes to Allah, remember, that's it when it starts for him. All the time which he's forgotten, for example, a person is fasting in Ramadan. They go into the kitchen, they open the fridge, out of forgetfulness, they munch, they eat, they go to KFC on a day where they're fasting, and they munch. They take a zinga meal, ya ikhwan. This person took a zinga meal. Opens the burger, puts the chips in there, puts the ketchup in there, mayo and salt and everything. He does not remember. Is he being addressed here? Is the Sharia talking to this person? No, not whilst he's in, whilst he's in the state, no. The minute he remembers is when he's been told, stay away from the food then. فَكُلُوا وَشَرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَطُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجَرِ this is all speaking to a person who is in a state of consciousness. He knows, remembers. Whilst he's in that state, everything is stopped from him. لا أمر ولا نهي. Are you with me, brothers? The second one is that the author mentions is الصبي. Sabi is a child. This child. The child is not also, the commands are not referring to him. All this, كُلُوا وَشَرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَدُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Establish the prayer. All of that is not talking to the child. He is not requested to pray. He is not requested to fast. Is there an age? There's an age for it. We're talking about the baby child. There's an age where the Sharia says, now you have to pray. Okay? How old is the child has to pray when he is forced to pray? At the age of 10. <coughs> Salah is 10. He's told to pray at 7, but not in a forceful manner. He prays five, four times a day. Fajr is just, he's too young, so he doesn't, he doesn't get waked, woken up. But you teach him Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib. If he's awake for Isha and it's not late, you make him pray at Isha. You know, he prays his little three Salahs, throws it in there. You're training him. So when he reaches 10, you're like, okay, the salah is now complete. Five prayers, now you have to pray. So he prays with you. And there's no excuse for him. If he doesn't, you manner him. Huh? That's what I'm going to say. You just have to manner him. I don't want social workers coming to my yard. You manner him. So the age of 10. The third one is Wal Majnoon. The Majnoon is crazy. It's the insane one. The insane is also not being addressed in the command and the prohibition. Brothers, 
if the insanity came to you by qadaullahi wa qadaruh and it was not because of something you put forward then there's no sin upon you that you're missing prayer and that you are you're not fasting and that you're insane nothing is upon you rather you could be rewarded if you used to pray and if you used to fast and if you used to be obedient to Allah and then now somehow qadarullah you became insane you're crazy if that happens to you then in this situation your reward inshallah ta'ala is going to carry on because this is a arid something tari something not in your it's not in your hands it's not something you did to yourself but if you became insane due to drugs that you took or you made yourself insane by whatever in haram um, haram method that you took and you lost it then you are an athim sinner and you're going to be accounted for your actions for missing the prayer and everything even though you don't pray but you're still a sinner you brought this about to yourself if you if you accumulated it through drugs and, and, and sins and, and haram and this got you to it for example, you got a house on mortgages and then the bank is coming and it's taking your house and stuff like that and you lost it. You got crazy. It's a problem. Or you took drugs, so much drugs that somehow you've just become crazy now. And etc. All of this is what? Or you, you're, you're alcoholic and you just became crazy now. You're talking to yourself. This time, at this point, you can't say this person's made you look. Rufi al qalam. He is. He doesn't have to pray because he doesn't even know how to pray right now. He doesn't know what he's doing. But is he a sinner? No, he's a sinner. He brought, him, he brought it to himself. All of these are not mukallaf. They are not what? They are not mukallaf. Pay attention now. When we say that they are not mukallaf, it does not mean that their actions don't have consequences. If a child runs over someone, are you with me, brothers? Or if a child kills somebody by accident, are you there? What do we say? Can we say, oh, sorry, <laughs> he's Musabi, come on, man, he's not Mukallaf. To the people that he killed, huh? Blood money has to be given. Sah? Are you with me? Blood money has to be given. But also it's not mukallaf. The majnoon. If he goes and he does something crazy and he causes a, the death of someone or does something crazy. If he's rich, he's got a bank and money is in his account. and Then they pay on his behalf for the, people, the family members which he killed. If a person who sleep walks in another people's house and slices a person's throat, he becomes what? If it's, if it's that's, that's with the condition that it's proven, that it's proven that this person is what? That it's proven that this person was in a state of sleeping. That's if, if it's proven like him. So does that make sense? That does not mean your actions don't have consequences. Your actions, actu your actions do have consequences. The majnoon we said, what's the, what's the, what's the definition for the word majnoon? Majnoon means man faqada aqluhu haqiqatan. Literally, this person lost his brain. He doesn't know what he's doing. And we define what it meant by the author's statement, which is as sahi wa sabi wal majnoon. Then the author, rahimahullah, mentions a mas'ala which is very well discussed amongst the usuliyin. It's one of the, heart, it's one of the biggest discussions that happen, which is halil kuffar, are the disbelievers? Being spoken to fi 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 furu al masail, ama fi furu al sharai. We know that the disbelievers, when Allah is requesting for them to come into Islam, sah? They have to come with ashadu la ilaha illallah and what? Wa ashadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. Do they not have to come with it, brothers? Do they? But when Allah subhanahu wa taala says establish the prayer, fast in the month of Ramadan, is this also something that they have been spoken to? Yeah. Are they being told to fast? Or do we say that La ilaha illallah is what's needed from them 
La ilaha illallah is what's needed from them. And the salah and the siyam and the hajj and the sawm, which are sub branches, that la ilaha illallah is the asal. They first have to come with the asal, and the furu' is not, they're not being spoken to here. Or are they actually being spoken to in all of it? So listen, one is that the ulama are unanimously in agreement. There's no difference of opinion when it comes to what? Halil kufar mukhatabuna fi usul sharia and fi usul shara'i. Are the disbelievers being intended? Are they intended? Are they being addressed in the foundation of the religion? That's mahalu ittifaq. Lam yakhtalif fi islam. Two scholars have a different upon that. That they're all being told to come into Islam. Inna dina indallahi al Islam. Inna dina indallahi al Islam. Allah says in another ayah, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ So they have to come into Islam. But the scholars differed and they took two opinions regarding what about Salah? What about Sawm? What about Hajj? Some said no. They're not being talked to. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ is not talking to a disbeliever. It's talking to a believer. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ النَّاس here is not Istighraqiya is not all of the people. It means only the believers. That's an opinion taken. Whereas Abu Mu'ali al-Juwaini here in Kitab al-Walaqat, he is saying, وَالْكُفَّارُ مُخَاطَبُونَ بِفُرُوعِ الشَّرَائِعِ That the disbelievers are being spoken to, and they are being intended, and they are being addressed in the sub-branches of the religion. وَبِمَا لَا تَصِحُ إِلَّا بِهِ وَهُوَ الْإِسْلَامِ And also they are being addressed in the usul of the religion. Now, this issue we have to speak about, which is the issue of al-furu' wal usul Dividing the religion into furu' and usul Ibn Taymiyyah, if you look at his Majmu' al-Fatawa, if you look at his, many of his works, you find Ibn Taymiyyah this, uh, does not like the idea of dividing the religion into sub-branches. And what? Fundamentals. And the first people that actually did divide the religion into usul and furu' is the Mu'tazila. They were the first people to do that. The Mu'tazila are a deviated group that cut away from the Jama'at al-Muslimin, the Muslim, the Muslim body. And Ali Imam Muhammad had a very uh, famous position regarding them. And the scholars, qarn and ba'da qarn, generation after generation, they, they refuted them. They're the first ones who divided it. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, some of the places in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, when you analyze and you look at it, you find out that he's actually against the idea of dividing the religion into some, some that which are usul and some that which are furu'. Are you with me, brothers? And in other places, he himself divides the religion into usul and furu' himself, ibn Taymiyyah. What you would come to realize is that even some scholars, they've done university, university researches and buhuth on it, that what Ibn Taymiyyah was against is not the concept of dividing the religion into usul and furu'. It was what they meant by when they said that this is an asr and this is a farah. And this is a very common issue that many people fall into, which is, they will say to you, usul of the religion is, the things that are fundamental things of the religion are all aqidah related. Aqidah is usul. And they say to you that furu' is what? Fiqh. So fiqh is a sub-branch. We're allowed to differ in fiqh. And in aqidah, we're not allowed to differ. That's what they will say to you. That's the belief of the majority of the Muslims. Sah? That's incorrect. That's the idea Ibn Taymiyyah is fighting against. Because within fiqh, there are things you and I can't even differ on. Sah? Are you with me, brothers? Because look at al masu al Khufayn. The scholars took it from fiqh and they put it to aqidah. Why? Is it not a fiqh issue? Do al al Khufayn. Brothers, are you with me? Why did they take that and place it in the books of Aqidah? Why did they do that for? Because the only group that went against Ahlul Sunnah and did not want to accept the concept of al al Khufayn was who? The Rafidah. The Rafidah don't believe in al al Khufayn. So it became a what? A belief of Ahlul Sunnah in regards to wiping over the al Khufayn wiping over it. No fuqaha differed upon that. So they put it in there. Are you with me, brothers? The concept of jihad, is that a fiqh issue or is it a aqidah related issue? Fiqh? 
It's in the books of fiqh. Is it not? Why did they take it and put it into the chapters of aqidah? Fighting a gate behind a leader who is, whether he's a transgressor or a transgressor, transgressor which is fajir or he's a bar, that they said you have to fight behind him. Are you with me, brothers? It's because it became a aqidah related or it became an asal related matter. Are you with me? This taqseem is incorrect for Ibn Taymiyyah. Even some aqidah related issues, there are differences of opinion regarding it. Such as, did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam see Allah? Is it not aqidah related? Are you with me brothers? Are you with me brothers? It is. So what should we divide usul and furu into? The usul are anything that comes regarding it a nas from the Quran or the Sunnah or a ijma' comes. This is an asal. You can't disagree with it. We, you and I can't differ upon it. Whether it's taught in fiqh or whether it's taught in aqidah, it doesn't matter. Anything that has regarding it a dalil, qala Allah, qala Rasul. And there's a consensus, there's an ijma' mun aqid, there's a connected consensus in this issue. You and I are not allowed to differ on it. This is called an asal now. You with me, brothers? Anything that does not have kitab and sunnah and no ijma', then it becomes a what? Far'i matter. It becomes a far'i related matter. In simple terms, asal is al masail al lati la taqbalu lil fihi. In simple terms, asal means any issue that does not accept ijtihad. Did we not say the qa'idah which is إِذَا جَاءَ نَهْرُ اللَّهِ بَطَلَ نَهْرُ مِعْقَلْ Right? هو. Is any issue that you are, is any issue which you can't come and do ijtihad on? You can't do a, uh, as they say, personal deduction. You can't do a personal striving. You can't extract ruling. Mm -mm. There's a nothing in this issue. As for furu' is what? Al-masail, which is what? التي تقبل الاجتهاد it accepts الاجتهاد so now based on that are the disbelievers هل الكفار مخاطبون في فروع المسائل أما في فروع الشرائع will say yes they are based on the ayah that he brought ما سلككم في سقر oh disbelievers what brought you to the hellfire قالوا لم نكن من المصلين we were not ones who used to pray they say that we didn't have prayed وَلَمْ نَكُوا نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ And we never used to provide for the needies. All of these are what? They are فُرُوعُ الْمَسَائِلَ According to what the author is talking about. Okay? Now. That some scholars done ijtihad? Or if everybody's using it in evidence. Any ijtihad that's taken from an evidence, that's right. That's not this. We're talking about ijtihad that's independent from a nas. Like for example, are we allowed to differ on the issue of? Are we allowed to differ on the issue of? A man getting married to a woman without the permission of a wali. Can we differ on that? No, we can't differ on that. We cannot differ on that. Ma'aqawl Abu Hanifa stands. Abu Thawr's qawl stands. Not Abu Thawr, sorry. And uh, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. And the qawl of who? Sha'bi. They gave the fatwa that a, a woman can get married without the permission of a wali. We say that. We have delil. Nusus. The ijtihad of Abu Hanifa with all respect and all love, will say to him, لا تقبلوا الاجتهاد بمورد النص We won't accept the ijtihad when there's a nas there. Because the qa'idah to us is what? لا اجتهاد بمورد النص إذا جاء نهر الله بطل نهر معقل We can't do ijtihad when there's a textual evidence. ولذلك look at Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, when they told him that Umar and Abu Bakr are saying حج التمتع is not allowed. هذا Abu Bakr and Umar. And look what he responded by saying, أقول لكم قال الله وقال الرسول. I am saying to Allah, saying in His Messenger, said, وتقول لي قال أبو بكر وعمر. 
يُوشِكُ أَن تُنَزَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ حِجَارَةً مِنَ السَّمَاءِ You guys are very close. It's very close. Allah will throw rocks from the sky from you guys and destroy you. It's a mas'ala fiqiyya, remember. With the goal of who stands here? Goal of Abu Bakr Umar stands here. Abu Hanifa is nowhere close to Abu Bakr Umar. Are you with me, brothers? So Ibn Abbas was very staunch on that. He didn't accept it. So any mas'ala that has a nas in it, a nas means, the word nas means, qala Allah, qala Rasul. And there's a consent mun'aqid, there's a consent connected in this particular issue, then there is no right for any individual, ka'ina man kana. Walidhalik Imam Shafi'i in his kitab, uh, it's, not, it's not in his kitab, Ibn, Ibn Qayyib brings it in his kitab, I'lam al which is what? That Imam Shafi'i said, man istabanat law sunnatun ar rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, anybody, who it becomes clear to him, a sunnah from the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, lam yakul lahu an yada'ha li qawli ahad, it is not permissible for him to leave this sunnah for the statement of anybody. Ka'inam man kan, whoever that person may be. Sah? The ulama's aqwal are used as, as they say, kalamul ulama yuhtajju laha wa la yuhtajju biha. The kalam of the ulama, they need evidence. They are not used as evidence. Are you with me? Many people today will say to you, Ya akhi, al mas'alatu fihi khilaf. Are you with me? That there's a khilaf in the matter. He wants to make the statement that there's a khilaf in this matter as though it's a evidence. That's not an evidence. Rather, when there is a khilaf, we were told to unite upon the delil. That's what Allah says in the Quran. If you differ amongst yourself in a matter, did Allah say, okay, since you differed, that the difference should be given consideration to? Is that what Allah said? Ah, we differed, right? Let's bring it back to the Kitab and the Sunnah. Are you there? But pay attention. If both parties are using evidences, both parties are using evidences, and they're explaining each other's evidences differently, then this ijkhilaf is, is accepted. 